Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share with you the reading right under where it says silent meditation and preparation. So if we can be thinking about what's being read. Sanctuary, the most sacred part of a religious building, the room in which worship services are held, a place of refuge and protection. Historically, wanted men and women could seek shelter there and not be arrested. Today, some churches shelter those who fear deportation to homelands of violence and danger. Today, we gather to say farewell to this space, this sanctuary, and move to a temporary sanctuary downstairs as we look forward to occupying a new sanctuary in the fall. We've just heard the centering music, which as usual, Kyle, was beautiful. Uh, we are not having Sandy Sweet preach today due to illness, but Huxley's going to fill in for him. And I'm Linda Merritt, your liturgist, and Kyle Aiken is our musician. So do we have announcements? I've greeted everybody. Do we have any further announcements? No? Okay. So let's move on then and please join me in the opening prayer call to worship. Wondrous God, people of faith have gathered in this room for decades to worship, to celebrate, to baptize, to marry, to mourn and celebrate the physical lives you have given us, to proclaim their commitment to Christ, to praise and to sing, to confess and to know forgiveness, to break bread and share the cup, to be the body of Christ. In this Easter season, help us to remember that Jesus met his disciples in an upper room, on the road to Emmaus, and on the lake shore. Where we meet our Lord, there is sanctuary. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn is found in the Methodist hymnal on page 87, what gift can we bring? Let's join now in the responsive reading, which is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise 
Praise God in his mighty acts. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with loud cymbals. Let every living thing praise the Lord. If those who are able would stand for the gospel reading, this comes from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. I believe this is going to be read responsively. Okay, so I'm the light print, you're the dark print. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter... Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of this portion of his holy word. like the children to come up please Now can you hear me? Yeah. Nope. It's on, it's green. So here we are. <laughs> so we'll start over. Jesus had already appeared to the disciples two times. The first time they said he came, just was there all of a sudden. They didn't know how he got in the room. And then he came again a week later, right after Easter. Well, this time, it's a few more days after that. 
And many of the disciples had been fishermen before they were disciples, and they decided to go out and fish. So they're out in the lake, and they've been out all night, and they hadn't caught any fish. Well, finally, they looked towards the shore, and they saw somebody there. They didn't know who he was, but he said, have you caught anything yet? And they said, no. And he said, well, drop your net down on the right side of the boat instead of the left side. Maybe you'll catch something. And so they did. And what happened? They caught a lot of fish. Do you remember how many fish? A hundred and... 53. Hey, these guys are good. Okay. Now, at that point, they were just so thrilled that they had caught all those fish. And all of a sudden, Peter and the other disciples looked, and they realized that man on the shore was Jesus. They hadn't recognized him at first. And Peter was so excited. He jumped off the boat, and he swam to shore. And when they got there, because he left the rest of them to bring the boat in, right? Get the fish all unloaded. But when they got there, Jesus had built a fire. And he was starting to cook fish that he had. And he said, well, bring me some other fish and I'll cook them. Now, I've never had Jesus cook breakfast for me before. But he did cook breakfast for the disciples. So when they had recognized him... They didn't really want to say, aren't you Jesus? But they knew that it was him. So he even gave them the leftovers to take home, like a doggy bag and everything. Now, when we follow Jesus, I have to tell you, he's gone to heaven now to be with his father. So he's not going to be cooking me breakfast when I go to Apple's Eaters. But he's still with us in our hearts and he'll always be with us. He'll be with people that love him, wherever they are. We've seen him in our minds here in this sanctuary. This is the last day we'll actually be worshiping in this room. But does that mean we're not going to be able to worship Jesus? No. Wherever people gather and love Jesus, and pray to God and pray to Jesus, he'll be there. Even if you are at school and somebody says something mean to you and you think, Jesus, what should I do? And you don't say something mean back, Jesus is with you. Jesus even is on Zoom. We do Bible study on Zoom, and we always end with a prayer. And I always feel Jesus with us, even though we're in different rooms and different buildings, because Jesus is wherever people pray to him and love him. So can you remember that? It's very important to remember, no matter what happens, no matter where you are, Jesus is with you. Now, of course it doesn't want to go. Thank you very much. Our next hymn is Here I Am, Lord, in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 593.
Before I begin our Holy Communion together, I want you to know that Sandy um, fell ill during the night and didn't feel, wasn't certain he can make it today, but he sends his blessings, his warmest best wishes to you. He's sorry he can't be here. And I want you to know as a matter of protocol that the elements have already been blessed and uh, we can continue with our communion service using blessed elements in the Holy Eucharist. And so if you will join me, I'm, uh, I'm just figuring this out a little bit at the last moment. Can I take the mic? All right, okay. I'd like to move around and I know I'm on Sandy prepared the sacrament of our Holy Communion for us. Let us, let us say this in unison. Um, I will lead. You have your responsive parts in bold. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. help me with this a moment, if you could hold the mic for me. Trusting in the presence and blessings of the Holy Spirit upon each of us, we hear anew the sacred story and the letter Paul wrote to the people of ancient Corinth. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Kyle, are you going to lead us now in the Lord's Prayer?
Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the same loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ. Please join me as we share in the bread and the cup together. And I, the, we'll have everybody come forward and receive a piece of bread that will be handed to you and a cup of wine. Uh, please partake and put them in the receptacles and then return to your seats.
let us in unison offer the prayer of thanksgiving. External God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. It's time, time now for our God moments. Actually, we're going to... You're going to skip that now. No, we're going to go back to something I missed earlier. <laughs> Bob, you've failed me. I, well, I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah. So. Jody, you saved me. <laughs> <laughs> I confess this was sort of all in the last moment of preparation on my part, and um, I missed a moment that is the most important part of today's worship besides communion, and that is to share the many memories that you have of this great church over the years. And I will come to you, or you can come to the front, whichever you're comfortable with, but share some of your memories so that we can be in communion and love with one another in the memory of your great church. Don't be bashful. Kyle. Kyle. Okay. Um, I know I'm technically relatively new here in well, relative terms, because I first came here in, um, I think it was 2018, which is almost five years ago, that was four years ago. Um, and I remember Leilani brought me in just for one choir. I was supposed to sing one choir song, and it was, I believe it was Because He Lives, and that's why I chose it for Easter, because I love that song. Um, and I really fell in love with the people here in the service and I just really want to thank all of you and I really love every one of you. I think everyone here is super kind, super um, um, comforting and it feels like home here to me um, and I'm very thankful to be a part of it like again because I know I, I'm now the pianist here but I used to sing in choir um, and I just remember all my moments here and I really appreciate this sanctuary especially too. Um, and it really does mean a lot to me. Amen. Amen. On a similar vein, I came here 10 years ago, so Carl, we're both still rookies when you face the people who have been here 20, 40, 50 years. But the thing that attracted me was I tried several others around the same community, and I got the feeling that it was walls with people, but I didn't feel welcome, uh, if that's the word. I just didn't. I came here, and, and although we had a handful of people compared to the others, everybody made a point to introduce themselves and welcome me. This is the body of this church. Thank you. <coughs> Amen to that. Well, I came here in 2009, I believe. I had just moved to Middleborough. And so when it came time to go to church, I've always been a Methodist, and here I am. Well, I walked in the door, and this dynamic person met me. She had knee socks that were out of this world. And, and she had a smile, she was so vivacious, and she handed me a cup, I forgot what was in it. Her name was Janet Lee, and so you can imagine, just bubbly, bubbly. I thought, yep, I'm back in, I'm back home, I'm back in the right church, and then, uh, a few months later, uh, the pastor had organized a trip to Israel. If it hadn't have been for this church, I would have never had the opportunity to go to Israel. So there are a lot of memories to, to keep. I, 
I relate to that. I remember the first person that has welcomed me in each Methodist church that I've ever been to. They were the most important person, people, in terms of making me feel safer. Someone else. Okay. Well, I'm going to work my way down. Thank you, Jim. I'm so thankful how to be able to be in this beautiful church. The, san the sanctuary here has just blessed me so many, so many times. The music that came from this church, as I and I became a part of it, that I. I loved it so much that, and the people are just wonderful people to be, be with. My, mo my mother and father were, were here before me, and uh, I know what they had found here. I also found many, many wonderful people here. Um, MJ kind of helped me a little bit about some of the history about this sanctuary, and it was it, it was quite amazing what what went here went through this, and the people that painted this and beautified this place. I thank you very much. Thank you for that lovely remembrance. Who else? I came here in 1988 with my three-year-old daughter, and now today I sit here with my granddaughter, who's 12. And over the years, we've had many events in this sanctuary, many um, children's programs and Christmas events. And I just have to say that the love that we feel in this church from everybody, and the whole community, actually. The, the community of Middleborough is, is wonderful. But I've grown in this church. When I came, I just was, I grew up in a church, but I just fell away, and I just, I grew here. Lovely. I've had many great experiences in this, in this building and in this room. I remember the first time I was asked to preach here, probably 25 years ago. I used to fill in once in a while. But what you couldn't see was the first time I got up to that pulpit, and I was grateful for that pulpit, because you couldn't see my knees shaking. <laughs> even though it's gonna be sad to leave this sanctuary in this room. The most important part is all of you people here. The church family is the most important part, not the building. We could meet anywhere, in another space, another home, whatever. But we'll, be all, we'll all be together, and that's the important part. Thank you. No amendments to that, Joe? <laughs> yeah, I remember a few years ago we used to have a uh, men's men's breakfast on a Saturday morning, and that was one of my uh, great enjoyments of getting to know the other other men of this church, and also just feeling welcome when I came back to this church. I, I came to this church a few times back in the '80s. And uh, I don't know, I, I, something happened, I fell out of it or whatever, and, and I started going to another church. But, uh, and then, uh, you know, I was welcome to, you know, one day I just walked in here and I and, uh, haven't left yet. And it's been you know, five or six years now, and I'm just grateful that uh, all the people that I've met, and I'm going to keep on coming. Thanks. That's testimony. Oh, of course. Ma'am, 
my brothers have been coming here off and on for as long as I can remember. When we would go to our Abel and Nana's house and we stayed over on weekends, we would come here for church. And I remember that we would usually sit in the back. And it was, we, used, we, weren't able, we used to not be able to see up here because we were so small. That's the memory I can remember, the oldest one. But me and my brothers are going to miss this place because there was a lot of memories here. And I think um, our Abba and Anna had our, their wedding here, which is another great memory. But we're going to miss this place. But you know, it's just another step for new possibilities and new memories to make. Thank you for sharing so much. That was really special, wasn't it? How many of you remember church just barely able to see over the pews? <laughs> that, was, that was very special. Thank you for sharing that. Who else? I remember once the youth group was doing a skit down front and I don't remember what the skit was about. I remember Jason Bourne was questioning whatever part he had. He was questioning his faith and God and stuff. And when I heard from somewhere out of the ether that resonant, attention-getting voice, I realized I knew God a lot better than I had ever imagined because Warren was lying in the organ loft behind that, in that little box next to Linda. And that was the voice. And for those of you who remember Warren in the choir or doing those mission dinners downstairs, um, if you ever heard that voice or you ever heard that giggle, you knew Warren's voice anywhere, anytime. But for my own memories, I have very fond memories of working on suppers and fairs and yard sales um, where we all pitch in and we are blessed. And when I first came here, I remember um, we came here because of Thelma North, the pastor at the time, and uh, we occasionally had a, a little group do interpretive dance um, and we had a much bigger choir in those days and it was really wonderful, and it's still wonderful. We're smaller, but we're wonderful and welcoming. I just stole it from her. Um, so I've been coming here probably as long as my parents, on and off, have been coming here, and I love everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I love everybody here, and um, I think of my father every time I'm here. It's, really emotional and I know you guys loved him so much and I loved the Christmas Eve masses singing up front um, <clears throat> and I also enjoy how welcome you guys make me um, another memory is the apple pies I had an excellent time hanging out with the ladies it was real fun and I love you all and I will continue to come wherever it is So often our church life is what I call wash and wear kinds of things, but it's the fact that we're washing them and wearing them together that matters. I love that. Uh, I don't speak from the cuff like all the others. My, besides, mine are rolled up. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> I guess so. I think so. Okay. Um, Many of us have enjoyed worshiping in our sanctuary for years. I have 56 years in, going forth, I hope. Since 1992, 30 years ago, we had the pleasure of worshiping in a renovated sanctuary where the presence of the Lord was in this place. The reality of the renovations in 1992 was while Dr. Reverend Helen Oliver was pastor. Okay, we had a capital funds drive to secure funds for our project. 
A stewardship executive committee was formed, chaired by Sherman Everhart, while each committee member had their role to play. Our director, Reverend Wesley E. Allen, was from the Office of Finance and Field Service of the Global Board of Ministries of the United Methodist Church in New York and led with Christian emphasis. So with our theme slash logo, an invitation to restore our window of hope, work began and pledges were made in addition to giving our regular pledges. Then a committee was formed under the direction of Bobby Everhart to research and discuss what was needed to be done and the best way to do it. Uh, this was with the guidance of our design consultant, Ted Ayers. Ted Ayers used to do a lot of historical renovations. May he rest in peace. This was to open up the whole altar area. Ted covered the organ pipes, as you see, with that beautiful diamond laced pattern lattice work. And he handcrafted the cross, which is our central focus. Then he moved the pulpit, which was in the middle, to the left side. The organ, which was centered back in the middle, was moved to the right side. So that opened up the area. Those uh, semicircular stairways, uh, stairs were made, and the choir used to sit in the back on the side, and when it was time to do the anthem, we uh, all stood on the, those stairways. Um, Let's see now. Um, so Ted found an original uh, ceiling design uh, under the ceiling that we had had painted all white. And it was decided to restore that design, uh, which was similar to the uh, interior wall designs. But later on, uh, we had water damage, and so then the, just the ceiling was pa painted plain again. New lighting systems were installed, which included the beautiful chandeliers that we have, and windows and pews were restored, new carpeting, enha and enhancing the sound system, and installing the, the tech, book, uh, tech booth was done. All this we have been blessed with for 30 years. But now we move on to our new location and the presence of the Lord will be with us. He lives, he lives in our hearts. Bless us all. Uh, also, <laughs> I uh, brought uh, two pictorials that I'll leave downstairs. And actually in it is MJ with her six-year-old daughter pictured in there. <laughs> uh, then we have just a, a little poster board uh, set up here for uh, the, that present time, for that present time that we went through. And we had our brochure all done and everything. Okay, I'll put those downstairs. <laughs> Thank you for the remembrance, for the history. When my children were younger, I'd say about 45 years ago, I started coming to this church. I grew up in a family that was not a church going family, but my mother did teach me about God. But the longer I came here, I started to learn a lot more than I ever thought I would learn. Now, when I first started coming here, they needed someone to watch the children downstairs and put on a little program every Sunday and read them stories. I was voted to do this. 
I'm a non-religious person. I teach in our children. How trusting can this congregation be? <laughs> but we did okay. But now my oldest daughter is in her 50s. She has so many fond memories, and she still, every once in a while, brings them up how she loved this church, the things they did with the kids back there. Halloween parties. The kids used to run up here at Halloween all dressed up and with my candy and Christmas and all the Christmas things. And then I'm a shopper. I hate to pass up a good sale. I was at a party store and they had all these little white angel rings. Somebody could use these, right? So I bought them all. <laughs> Worked out well. We had a children's Christmas. So, my two granddaughters loved it. They were running around in the Christmas show as little angels. And then the last thing I want to tell you I think is really funny. If you remember, Thelma, my youngest, my middle granddaughter was five, and her mother was very sick. So, I used to bring them here, and so she walked up to Thelma, and she said, Pastor Thelma, I hear you work for God. And she said, well, you could say that. And she said, my mother's very sick. Could you pray to God that he would help her to get better? Mm. So Thelma said, sure. So Thelma's sitting there quietly with her hands crossed, praying. And then she said to my granddaughter, OK, I said, a really nice prayer. By your mother. And my granddaughter said, well, I think you better say it again. If I didn't hear you, I don't think he did. <laughs> so, didn't come for a while, but I have a lot of memories. And I want to thank all of you. My daughter passed away. It's been very hard. But I want to thank all of you for me and my family for the beautiful job and the support I received from this church. So I will always have a special heart for all of you. Maybe not agree with you all the time. <laughs> I had to say that for Bob. <laughs> but so I really love the church, and I've met a lot of nice people in here, and thank you. Oh, goodness. Ditto to everybody. All that you all said. Just wonderful. I came here in 1973, a uh, long, long time ago, and, you know, have worshipped at South Middleborough back here often. Um, the one thing that nobody has talked about yet that we haven't got back here yet were the Pops concerts. Oh, my goodness. And I'm sure you all have great memories about the Pops concerts. This church was certainly a church just full of music and praise. And um, people remember the person who greeted them. I'll share my story. Um, my husband, I was a city girl and moved to Middleborough in 1972, a long time ago, and had wonderful neighbors. We lived over here on Reland Street. And I was raised, you all know, Presbyterian, so no Presbyterian churches here. So I was shopping for a church, and I spent about one month in most of the Protestant churches here Mace Bataro was my neighbor, and she invited me here. This is before you were married, a long time ago. Um, so I walked into this church, and, and like you all have said, just home, such a welcoming, wonderful family here. And um, so I will always remember the person who welcomed me here, too. But let's not forget the Pops concerts. And I was thinking today, I just spoke to Richard Grant. I think you all remember Arlene. And back when we did the Pops concerts, today is May 1st, Happy May Day. And Arlene and Richard would make the May baskets. I think you did too, right? For the, oh, you were singing. For the Pops concerts, we always had May baskets for sale at the Pops concert. And they were the ones that, that made them. And Richard sends his love, by the way.
So um, I didn't go to church here when I was little because mom was, actually she wasn't anything really, I don't think, but dad was Catholic, so you know what that means. Uh, so um, sh when they moved to Middleborough, they lived between Mrs. Helen Party and Mrs. Dunham, both Methodists, and so mom ended up coming here. Well, anyway, um, Mrs. Dunham got mom to come. I was searching for a church. I met Bob. He was a Methodist. Mom came here. It all worked out. But our babies were baptized here. Um, mom had her celebration of life service here. Um, Bob and I were married at South Church, but we renewed our vows here. Of course, Thelma was doing it, and we're sitting waiting for Thelma, waiting for Thelma. She'd gone off shopping. She had forgotten. <laughs> but then she came in at the last minute, and it all worked out. But just this past week, my granddaughter Kennedy and I were in the church doing something downstairs in what I call the library. And she said that she knew about a secret passageway. And I'm thinking, how did she know about that? So we had to come upstairs and search for the secret passageway. Now, if you don't know where the secret passageway is, Go see it before you leave. So, a lot of great stuff. Oh, and I also wanted to say, I've been involved with UMW. There have been so many wonderful, super women that have supported this church. It's just incredible. Wonderful women. Not that you guys aren't good, too, but you know. <laughs> it's the women. What can I say? Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here today. I just feel so blessed. The eyes of my heart will always view this sanctuary as the faithful and loving place that so many great things have happened here. And I'd like to bring you the love of South Church. For so many years, we were sister churches, and I feel, I still feel that we're related I, I feel so comfortable here and such love. Um, the sanctuary was where my grandson, my oldest grandson, was baptized in 97. Bless him, he made me a great grandmother. <laughs> <Just me. laughs> um, but I remember so many other wonderful things. My ears were hearing and seeing Sue Peak and her whistle as the music is playing. And I got to share so much wonderful time with Sue and Sue <laughs> whistling. Uh, I remember the bell choir, Mary Bourne and her bell choir, and the choir itself, Pat Swim and her cantatas, her Christmas cantatas, just an Easter, yes, so many beautiful wonderful things and I know you as a congregation remember so much more than I do but th this all means so much to me and so I'm glad to be here and I know you will continue and we will continue to share our relationships bless you all and bless this sanctuary thank you that's probably the best example of Methodist connectionalism that I've heard in a long time. We are a connectional church, aren't we? Huxley? Yes. Can I say something? Please do. I have a microphone until he has to turn it off because I talk too long. <laughs> I've been listening to what everybody said and it brings back so many memories because I think I've got you all beat. My parents were married here and I was baptized here, so I don't remember the first person that greeted me. But they must have done something right because I'm still here. Um, I don't know where to begin, and I will keep it short, I promise, Rick. I have so many memories. I remember when it was the old front of the church before the hurricane took down the tower. I remember it being rebuilt. I remember going to Sunday school here, and I remember teaching Sunday school here. I remember singing in the junior choir. And I remember singing in the, the real choir as recently as, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I remember so many choir directors, and I'll probably leave out people, but 
I was just going to say, Mary Bourne definitely, and Pat Swim, who was first the accompanist and then took over as choir director. There was Eleanor Calvin, who I had taught with in Rainham. Then Leilani, who would hand us this incredibly difficult music for a cantata and say, oh, you can do it. <laughs> and somehow we did. Um, the music was always a big thing to me, and that's probably what I've missed the most now, especially during the pandemic when we couldn't even sing the hymns. But I'm just grateful that we now have Leilani's protege over here, Kyle. It is such a blessing to have him with us, and, and I'm really glad you're here, Kyle. Um, I do remember all the Pops concerts, and I've also got you be my grandmother used to make the May baskets. I remember as a little girl, she would be at the dining room table taping, pasting uh, crepe paper around. Um, I remember the first time I got to go to the Pops concert when I was like preschool, my parents would go and grandma would stay with me and they said, when you get a little older, you can go. I remember the first time I was in it when we did the Maypole dance. I was so excited. <laughs> um, you know, I have so, so many wonderful memories of the place and the people, and it's been extremely hard for me to come to terms with the fact that this building won't be my church much longer. But as many of you have said, I truly have come to realize you, you are the church. And as I said to the children in the children's sermon, Wherever we go, wherever we worship, Jesus will be there. And isn't that what it's all about? Anyone else? You're coming forward. I don't have to come to you. <laughs> First, I have to say thank you, Huxley, for filling in today. Not easy. This is not easy. Because I'm the one that leading you out of here. I don't want to do it. We have to do it. But I need to say it's exciting to move forward, to get the yokes off. To get rid of the bills, to become a church, to be able to do programs again instead of just surviving. It's going to be exciting. But yet, we're going to miss this beautiful place. And I thank you, every one of you. for all the work to be together as a family to keep moving forward and not giving me a lot of grief but to give me support and for that I thank you all Nothing like two oversized men hugging each other, huh? <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I get a little bit of this too, but I'm your newest um, attendee. Sorry, Kyle. But <clears throat> last year, I got a call from Sandy to talk to me about whether I would work with you in a conversation about your church. And he told me a little bit, um, very brief, that's part of his technique, so you don't get the whole idea right away. And I sent a short vitae to Paul and Bob. They must not have read it because they asked for an interview. And so we had a Zoom interview on July 28th, 
and we began our work in September. I have been so deeply touched by you. I share the tears that Bob just expressed to you for the same and different reasons. You have opened your hearts up to me. You've done work that nobody wanted to do, but you did it anyway, and you did it together. Are you all in agreement? No, but do we have to be? Absolutely not. No family, no family ever agrees on every point. The beauty of what you have is what you have each and every one has expressed individually. You are probably one of the strongest families I've ever had a chance to worship with in all the churches I've been in. You held me very close the morning that my mother died in November. You've shared with me openly and frequently my joy for my newest granddaughter born this month. And I've been here with you in those moments, not with my home church, but with you. And I have felt at home like I cannot say. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the memories. I want to thank you for generations of being special because this is what a real church is. And you're right, you're going to miss the building but you still have each other, and I hope you remember that as you transition. I will be coming, you've stuck with me now, not every week, but I told Rick this morning, I gotta figure this out because I'm too attached to you now, sorry. <laughs> you, you did this to me. You touched my heart, my heart. And I can't say that more sincerely. I am just, just feel very privileged that you shared so much of your lives with me in this process. So let's just say a prayer and thanks for, thanks for the memories. Lord, we, your church, have shared just part of the great story of this church, its building, its people, and the generations who have found peace and solace and love within its walls. That's what church does. Church is the family you need when you least expect it or can anticipate the need. Church is the family that shares the joys, that understands the highs and the lows of every member's life. Church is the place where you raise joys and concerns because you honestly believe we all make a difference. And in raising them to you, we feel we are heard. Please be with us as we transition to our new surroundings later this year. Please be with us as we pack up our belongings, tenderly say goodbye to things that really matter to us. And please remind us every day, every time we join with worship, that the family that you helped us create is what matters most. We ask all these things through the teachings, the love, and the voice of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I need a bulletin. I'm lost in the, can I borrow this just a moment? I think we're at joys and concerns, aren't we? I think so, that's what I, yeah. I don't trust my own read, oh, thanks, Bob. <laughs> Very reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, I tell you what, let me, I got out of sequence, let me figure this out in front of you. All right, we did Here I Am, Lord, we, met, we just did stories, um, we are going to sing a hymn, but it's not this hymn. And it, it's due to a slight change. We're very sorry, but um, the message didn't get out quite as early. And Kyle, um, what was the hymn we're going to sing now? 369, right? 369, Blessed Assurance. 
Who did I borrow this from? Thank you. Please rise at table. Now it's time for our joys and concerns. I have a joy that my great niece returned safely from her trip to Greece with her high school. She had a wonderful time and after she's had time to catch up on her sleep and get over the jet lag, I'm gonna visit with her and we're gonna compare notes from when I went to Greece and she went to Greece. My guess is things didn't change very much. So. That's a joy that I have. Do we have other joys? Looks like Paul has a joy. No. No? I'm going to deliver the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> My eye surgery on Thursday went well, but it will be a while before we know the final result. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Other joys? Nope. I have a joy that I was able to spend this weekend with my grandparents. Wow. I'll bet it was a joy for them, too. 
this service was a joy. Tears and all. I have a 39-year-old grandson that's going to be married May 14th. <laughs> I never thought it would happen. Did he go to school with Nancy? Yeah. Our sister, Corinne, is going to be married this August. Joy. The bishop has finally cleared himself so that we can move forward from that Westgate property and hopefully now we go into the courts to get that will so that we can move on that property. But a big step. The bishop has finally acted on something that we've been looking for for a long, long time. The other thing is all the hard work that we've done with Huxley, he has written a report for us so that we can submit it to the, to the district in order for us to move forward to our new place. And I thank you for all of that work. With everything that you've had going on in your life, here I am badgering him. He's enjoying his grandkid and I'm saying, Huxley, where's the report? Where's the report? <laughs> <clears throat> so, no, not that bad, right? Not that bad. But I just wanted to say we are still moving forward um, to our new place of worship where we're going to need all of you there to help decorate so it'll be so beautiful so we can make it home. My concern... MIT, we're on, the, we're on the rise with COVID. Stuff is going up, so I worry about my staff. You know, they work every day in their bathrooms, right? I worry so much about them. I want to say what a pleasure it was to be Huxley's scribe during some of these meetings. <laughs> he is very easy to work for and very uplifting. I just want to say welcome again to Jennifer and Ellen for being here, new people here today, and for our South friends. others that would like to be raised? I will raise my church, uh, Westport Point United Methodist Church. After three hours at a transition workshop, Zoom meeting on Saturday, still with no appointed, our, our pastor was chosen very, very early in the process, early February, to, to move. And uh, it was not something that our church or she wanted. But it's part of the connectional part of our church, it's part of the itinerant ministry of our church. And I have to remind myself always that this is God's church and there must be a reason whether I know it or not. So we got notice that on Monday night we will get our one hour interview of our new pastor. And of course that's always nerve wracking to know how that's going to go. We'd love to do it in person, but it's not going to happen. So I, I would like you to hold Westport Point United Methodist Church in your prayers just for the sake of knowing that we are too going through our own kind of transition and are anxious like you are. Are there any others? May we take a moment in prayer together Most heavenly and gracious Lord, 
you have shown us your capacity to heal and to feed the many. You have proven yourself to the disciples after your death on the cross. You have shown those who doubted. You have comforted those who needed. Please make your presence known to us now, this moment, as we share with you our joys and our concerns. And we ask that for those who need your healing grasp, that you put your arms around them and let them know you are near. That's all it takes for you to be near to those who need us most. We are grateful for the return of Linda's niece, great niece, from Greece. We look forward to the stories of hearing the comparison of Linda's Greece and her great niece's visit. We are grateful that Nancy's eye surgery went well and we ask for your healing arms to embrace her while her eyes heal for good results. We appreciate time that we have with family members, with grandparents, time that all too frequently goes and suddenly is hard to find again. It's really nice to hear it raised as a joy. We are celebrating a sister, Corinne, who is to be married in August, and we are also celebrating a grandson to be married in May. We're celebrating the service that we shared today, the memories, the love, the stories of the church that is your church, the church we identify with, the church we come to for peace, assurance, and to be in your presence. And we are grateful that the cogs of bureaucracy have moved a little our way and have freed the Westgate deed so it can be cleared. We ask that you stay close to us as we move forward. We are in transition. We didn't say it today, but we are anxious. You know that we are anxious. You know every individual one of us. Reassure us that the family that we so love will be the family that we are with in our new dwellings. And it's not the dwelling, it's the family that matters. We ask not only for Bob's staff, but for all people who are exposed at work to conditions that put them in the presence of disease, particularly the COVID pandemic. And we ask that you be with all the churches in the conference that are experiencing transition, those having pastors leave, those having pastors come in, those whose charge is changing from full-time or half-time to part quarter-time. We are all trying to survive in difficult times with difficult pressures around us. There's so many questions for our church to still answer. Remind us that our love for one another, our love through you, is what's going to hold us together. You are the glue that makes all of this possible. You are the presence we seek, and we ask that we feel it every moment in our needs. And we share the joys that we have, the joys in our hearts, the joys for our church family, as a means of letting you know how much we appreciate the life we have led together and the life we look forward to in the future. We ask many things of you and we ask them through the grace and the example you gave us through your only son, Jesus our Christ, who died for our benefit. We ask that we not waste that moment, that opportunity any longer and we rejoice in our saving grace through him. Kyle.
I think this is your moment. Be not dismayed, whatever time God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care. days of toil when hard doth fail God will take care of you when dangers fears your path the same God will take care of you God will Every day or all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test. God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. As God takes care of us, it is now time for us to take care of ourselves and the work of the church. Would our ushers please present the plates for our offerings and tithes.
Would you please join with me? The prayer of thanksgiving is found in your bulletin. Generous and giving God, we thank you this morning for all the blessings you have given us in the past. We give you thanks for all the blessings you will bring to us in the future. Amen. And our closing blessing, let us read again together. May God open our eyes and hearts to always see the gifts he has given us. May God give us the courage to use them to make a world a better place and to bring others to Jesus. May God's blessing rest upon all those who will live or work in this space we vacate today. Amen. Would the cross and flag bearers please come forward? As we finish this service today in our closing hymn, we're going to carry out the symbols of our church to the back of, of, the, of the sanctuary. And symbolically, we are going to do this as we sing the hymn, but to remember it as we carry forward to the new space that we share together. So please rise as able and let us sing the closing hymn together. We are the church, number 558, as we transfer the symbols of our church and our faith to her new home. Amen.